Homicide Watch is a website, homicidewatch.org, that covers every homicide in D.C. from the initial crime report through prosecution and sentencing. It's powered by a database, but the heart of it is really a reported blog uh, where I do most of the reporting. I'm in court nearly every day following cases, um, tracking them through the system. We're both from the newsroom. Um, originally, I uh, had been a crime reporter in California. I really loved what I was doing and wanted to do it here. Unfortunately, no one was hiring crime reporters in D.C. Part of the reason we started the site is because I had this sense that the conversation that we were having about violent crime wasn't complete because we didn't know really who was being killed, where they were being killed, and what was happening afterwards. A lot of what we try to do is with the site in general and with documents in particular is take things that are technically public and make them more accessible, more usable, and more meaningful. My approach, I like to say, is open notebook. Anything that I have while I'm covering a case should be online. If it's important to me, it's going to be important to people following the case. We have a searchable database of every court document that we collect. I've learned that the typical news cycle of a story doesn't really suit the purpose of covering crime very well because people come back to crime stories sort of on their own time and for different emotional reasons. We know that people come back to the site and they follow a case from start to finish, from arrest to indictment to trial. So one Saturday morning I woke up and part of my news checks is to check my analytics and I saw a search for killing of Jamal in DC October 8th 2011 and I saw a man was murdered on Quincy Street so I started pulling together this information and saying okay Jamal Quincy Street shooting I took the, those search terms to Facebook and to Twitter and was able to identify the victim in that case what I've realized though is that the point of being first isn't necessarily because we're in competition with other media. The point is that friends of Jamal were looking for information, they were looking for a place to go, they were looking to share their experiences and feelings. By having the information quickly, we created a place for them to go and react when they wanted to react, which was immediately and not 48 hours later. I had one letter recently from a woman who said, it felt like my father's death didn't matter until I finally saw his photo on Homicide Watch. And then I knew that people more than just me cared. Some of the best moments working on the site happen when I see family members of one victim reaching out to family members of another victim. And have, being able to have created a place for that to happen is a really good feeling.